several other things and then teach you a lot about yourself so that you can get an understanding of, of uh, what makes you tick, basically. Now, when we were coming up in the elevator, she said something to me, and I was like, oh, wow, how did she know that? Just by, like, one statement. So you can mm -hmm. analyze a person quickly, right? Because you said something, what, I'm a, I'm a giver or something yes. like that? Because we yes. were talking about the intern program is no longer in existence anymore. Right. And I was like, oh, I feel bad if we'd have to ask them to go to Bojangles because you kind of feel guilty. And so she said, oh, what? I don't know what you said. Well, one of the things that we teach in a free screening is what's called the Satira model. And the Satir model is based uh, on four patterns that Virginia Satir came up with, which uh, identify, uh, she called it a self-esteem protection device, and one of them is the placator, which is the giver and the doer in the world. People who can have the life sucked out of them uh, very quickly because they overgive and overdo. So some of the statements and then things that you were saying, it, it, it really kind of hit home that you really are a giver and a doer. Um, I don't know. Do you think so? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Bob is what we would call a computer. Um, you also have that as well. But there are four patterns, the blamer, the placator, the computer, and the distractor. So the computer is the highly intellectual person that's analyzing things. And I'm sorry. You've missed. I don't think that's. I don't think that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <He is. laughs> yeah. And he definitely is the computer. Yeah. And so. I noticed when you shook Brody's hand. Yes. It, there's, you could tell right away what he was. That when I shook his hand, yeah. no, no. Is so that, can you analyze yeah. like the four of us? Because maybe we're all different. Maybe there's some similarities. I mean, absolutely. And I can quickly go through each of them. Um, as I said, she called it a self-esteem protection device. We all do all four of these things, but there's one that we hold on to the most that we feel protected by. So the blamer is uh, it's hard for them to reach their goal because they are too busy trying to blame somebody for having a goal in the first place, right? right? And it's hard to communicate with them because they always feel as though they're being blamed. So you might know people like this in your life, right? Yeah. That'll pop up. So they put up a big defensive wall because they feel as though they're being blamed. And the spilt milk just doesn't get cleaned up, blaming and defending that position. Placators are the givers and doers. They overgive, overdo until they get exhausted. Later on, eventually, they'll build up a little bit of anger and resentment, and they will villainize you <laughs> because they get exhausted. You know, nobody cares about me. Why am I so tired and exhausted, right? I've had those um, nights. <laughs> <laughs> and we all do. Again, we all do all four. The computer, it's hard for them to reach a goal because they're too busy researching it or they're analyzing it or sometimes they're just getting stuck in the details of it, trying to figure it out. And there are you know, different uh, levels of these things. That's but, you with all your ideas. Yeah. You come up with all of these great ideas, and then it's like, what happened to your idea? No, I don't know. I'm on to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you'll research it, and that's very stressful. So the last one is the distractor. So they're too busy distracting away from the goal to get to the goal, and it's hard to communicate with them because before you know it, you're down the hallway, going down that rabbit hole with them. So... Those are the four things. So in order to, and I've heard you before, obviously, I've listened to the, you know, the radio station, but just based on what you said in the elevator, that was just a, a red flag for that. It's neither good nor bad, here nor there, up or down. It's just your model of the world and how you process the information and how you take it in. Okay. Now to um, hip, no, the hip, hip, what do you, how do you say it? I am a hypnotist, and I hypnotize okay. people. Right. That's really a hard word to say, though, because I'm like, like you'll Hypnosis? say it fast. Yeah. Yeah. To right. hypnotize a person, um, they have to want to be. Yes. Right. They have to be sincere. Right. So smoking right. is, is your deal. Uh, I was a 30-plus year smoker myself. I didn't think I wanted to quit, <laughs> but I did. Yeah. I walked out of there. Not only did I quit smoking, I gave up another thing, which was fast food. Now, I didn't really drive around fast food a lot, but it was something that inside of my mind that was sort of like poison to me somehow. Uh, not a real popular grandmother, because we won't go to McDonald's. Or, it's not that there's anything wrong with McDonald's, don't get me wrong, but in my opinion, for them, I think they have a better choice. Yeah. So somebody else can take them, but I just don't, I just don't do it anymore. It's not something that is even really on my radar. So, um... Maybe you have to come two or three times here to try to get us out, because <laughs> I, I stop all the time. Yeah. All right, 
So, um, do you need to take us into another room, or do can you do something? Absolutely. I, well, I would say ethically, if I have, and if people are listening in a car, and I'm hypnotizing you on air, I certainly want, wouldn't want anybody, you know, getting into that relaxed state and running into a tree, obviously. So Could that happen over the air, where they would get zo so zoned in and relaxed that mm -hmm. it could happen? Absolutely. I was working with a girl when I had uh, gone home on vacation uh, a while back, and uh, a young girl, so all the kids kind of ran up into the space where I was, even the dog. And uh, and I was going into an induction, and they were all <laughs> like this. They really wanted to observe. The dog actually went around in like the three circles that they do. First, he came across the, the wood floor on his tiptoes, trying not to make noise. It was hysterical. Mm -hmm. Animals are great. So they will listen to your voice and just kind of zone out, too. Huh. So, yeah, so I wouldn't want them to, you know, get into that relaxed state while they're driving it, okay. obviously. All right. Who's going to use? It doesn't sort? matter. I know that for me, like, I wanted to want to eat healthier, and which I'm not horrible with eating, but go to the gym. I want to lose this post-pregnancy weight. Okay. So that's important right. that I want to work on. All right. Okay. Well, you go first. All right. Well, bye. All right. But doesn't it take a while, though? Yeah, there are usually several... Um, well, maybe sometimes several. It just depends on the person. So it's She's not like, just She's like, I can't a, help you. Yeah, no. You're too no. far gone. I can't help you. <laughs> but we do offer that free screening, and we have to kind of go through those things first to make sure that, you know, that you can play along. We can do some physical suggestibility tests right here on the air that, you know, yeah, you can watch while, oh, while I'm doing that. You, you're close to me. Or, okay. Or do you want to go ahead and do it? Okay. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to put your hands together like this and interlock those fingers, right? And take these two fingers and just pull them out like that, okay? okay? And what I want you to do is I want you to keep them open, but I want you to stare at the tips of those fingers. Just really stare at the tips of those fingers. Really focus okay. on them. And as you look at those fingers, I want you to imagine that I put a C-clamp on the outside of those fingers, okay? Okay. And this C-clamp has nuts on it. So as you stare at that, I'm going to start twisting those nuts. And as I do, that C-clamp will get smaller, and your fingers will start to draw together, just as though they have magnets in them. And as I keep twisting, you can already see that your fingers are slowly moving together. So keep focusing on those fingers. And as you watch them, and I keep twisting those nuts, is that kind of freaky? <laughs> Well, because so it's like I have a tick them, on that right hand. It's yep. like it's ticking closer. You'll, you'll, fe you'll I can feel, feel it. You'll feel the tendons start to pop, and as you're watching that, and really concentrating on the tips of those fingers as I keep twisting it and imagining that C-clamp getting smaller and smaller. And we can keep going and soon those fingers will, that's the little tendon there popping in that finger. Do you see that? Yeah. And so as I promise I you I'm not it, doing it for fakeness. I mean, I promise you I could feel a pop in right. my finger. I promise. And as you see them coming closer and closer together, it's just almost as though they're magnetized and it's kind of a freaky thing. It's my favorite thing to do because it freaks people out. All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. It's something that you're doing. Now, can, then, because mine is taking a while, do some people's fingers... Some people go real fast and some people go real slow. But you are watching that and you are trying to process that inf information as we do this. Okay. So I'm as almost I keep touching. Twisting, My fingers are almost touching. That's right. And so as we keep twisting, soon they'll touch. And we can go on forever and I can get them to push so tightly together that you'll beg me to stop. But for really? right now, I just want you to notice how you're following my direction. Now, does it determine your but IQ you can or them now. normal normal fingers? Does it? It's kind of like no. there feels like there's a strain in both these fingers. I'm not joking. This like I'm not trying Facebook to be funny. Live, by the way, with the show oh, cool. Now, so. But is that normal? It feels like there's um, you know those braces when you break your finger that they mm -hmm. put on your fingers to keep them straight. That's what right. it feels like both pointy fingers have on right now. What it that does. was is what we really look for. You followed a lot of directions there that you weren't even aware of. And I was watching you and how you were progressing. So you were following directions or minding, uh -huh. and we got that desired result at the end. But for time purposes, you know, and some people do. And I, you know, the old fashioned cranks where you can do this. If you go real fast, they'll just kind of zip together and it kind of freaks okay. people out. But that is an example of. How you would be a good candidate for hypnosis because really you were following my direction and and going along. Now I've I've done it before and I actually try to do it in the past to not eat fast food, which I zoomed out of the appointment and went straight to Burger King. But that's because um, not because I don't think it was working. It was because I was so exhausted at that time. I think I was sleeping on average maybe an hour a night that I just wasn't. 
focused, I don't think. Right. Because I was right. I was snoring. I was snoring before yeah. we even got through the session. I mean We want you to be awake and on a level of awareness. You'll always know what's going. It's like going to the movies. If you go to the movies and you sit in the chair, you're with your family, you're safe, it's okay. Well, I think we're safe. And the lights go down and the, the screen opens, then you just kind of get lost in the plot of the movie, right? You, it's not that you forgot you were in the theater. It's not that you don't know that there are other patrons around. You can hear candy wrappers or things like that. You're just in that state. So... And we all go in and out of states of hypnosis all day. So if I say to you, uh, maybe you would be better at that. How old are you, Erica? 25. Is that okay to say that? No, I'm uh, not 25. No, I'm 34, but I yeah, still claim me 25. Too. <laughs> so if I say, uh, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Absolutely. That is oh, very gosh, much. Oh, bad self. I never heard that before. That's because you're 34. Okay. That was a commercial for alka <laughs> seltzer that ran 30 years ago, yeah. okay? Remember the discs that they plopped in the water? I do remember the visual, but I don't remember the song, yeah. Okay, so you were four, around four when that last aired, and you can bring it up just like that because it's become a part of your inner reality or you're unconsciously competent right. about it or have that in your memory. Tell her about that time when the every time you go to a comedy club you have to pee or something. Okay, so this... Guy, I, I wouldn't even call a hypnotist, but he asked for people, you know, to come up there. So I raised my hand. He said, "You come up here, whatever." It was like four of us, mm -hmm. and he said every time he was telling everybody to do something funny. So he told me, he said, "Every time you use a uh, cell phone, uh, you'll have to go to the bathroom okay. every time." And now. Every time I go to the bathroom, every time I have use a cell phone, I have to go to the bathroom. I mean, it's it's the weirdest thing. It's it's still happening. How long ago was that? Mm, gosh, twenty years or so. I mean, it it was, and I know, I you know, if I pick up the phone and call my wife. I will have to go. Go to the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. So Can you to, snap him out of that? Usually, usually what happens is that suggestions like that, stage hypnosis, is about a 72-hour cycle, something around there, give or take. You know, it just depends. Um, somewhere inside you just held on to it. And it's usually that other person that, that should really have undone that um, and negated everything before you left that uh, venue, basically. Yeah. So... Good Ecology says that, you know, our clients are first, and their uh, their ecology is the, what's most important. So, yeah, usually they'll, you know, make a statement where everything is undone. Yeah. So somehow you just kept a hold of that, or it could be something that you're just, you know, relating to. Maybe I just have to go to the bathroom a lot. And maybe you just have to. I have an inappropriate yeah. question that's not really related, but so your voice is very calming and soothing. Have you ever been asked to do like phone sex operating or either like suicide hotline because she can calm you down and just be like, don't jump from that bridge. You know, yeah. it's so yeah. calming though. Have you ever had yeah. that? No, I do have a friend who said, uh, I'm going to send you the information to do voiceovers because you'd be fabulous oh, that's at it. A good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I would consider that, but I, I, that's probably the only person that's ever said that to me. I have a lot of people who will tell me that, um, well, I could listen to your voice all day long, which is great. Obviously, it's you're like good. Come to my session and pay me yeah. for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, how can you uh, help Brody? Well, because so Brody either well, I have multiple problems. Yeah. Okay. I feel like sometimes I want to go work out. I want to be more fit, but then something else will come up, and I'm not. I guess I'm not disciplined enough to say no to doing something else and saying no. I have to. I have to go do this, like, I have to go at noon to this class, I have to work out, and so I, I feel like I am committed, but I'm probably not as committed as I think I am, mm -hmm. because I'll say, well, I just can't go, because this needs to get done, or that needs to get done, and right. it's usually right. work-related. Which so. you should do the one about work, where you're not worked up about it, and so, like, he'll get oh, so okay. intense so about a, work That's the stuff. other thing, sometimes stupid little things that go wrong, or that are caused by certain Ooh. people... Um, it gets me really angry and worked up, 
but it's because it's so dumb. It's not like, you know, people yes. make mistakes every day. Things happen. But when it's something so absurd and it's, it, it could have been avoided, then I get worked up sometimes more than I should. And I recognize that. And I'm like, God, I, I'm coming off as, like, the angry person. But I'm yeah. not. It's just that stupid things get me so upset. It's like, that didn't need to happen. Or why is that happening? Or, you know, why is this person... He will. So, Bob and I will be sitting here like, eh, it's fine. He's like, ah! I'm going to go tell that person off right now, you know, because he's so passionate. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but you used to have tons of passion, like, a lot. Well, it's just because there's a lot of integrity, you know, for the show. Mm -hmm. And so, it's really protective. And so, I'm, you know, I keep hearing people say, you know, you get as upset as you allow things to get you upset. Or you get as upset, you're in control of your emotions. Right. So. Absolutely. So, go back to the blamer and the distractor, right? Remember the... It's all your fault. Um, again, it's not good or bad or right or wrong. It's how you're absorbing the information and what you're doing with it, right? You do have a high level of integrity, and it always falls back on you as what you're thinking in your own head, correct? Yes. So, so everybody around you that you're trying to instruct or uh, do things with or have things go off smoothly, um, you feel quite responsible for that. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. So... It's an integrity thing. Then the distractor, as far as working out, it's way more fun to call your buddy than, than it would be to have to go and do that, do that hour. When you get out of the gym, you feel great. Right. So, oh, absolutely. So the motivation part of it is, so the four patterns that we talked about before, uh, what we do in the office is we have people level, okay? Leveling is simply taking a deep breath in, identifying when you're falling into those patterns and saying, how do I want this to go? I don't care whose fault it is. I don't care who likes me or doesn't like me. I don't care about all the options and details surrounding it. And I really don't care what everybody else is doing. I'm just going to the goal. So the other day I did listen and I heard about, you know, the white robe on the porch in the mountains and that, oh, that yeah. feeling, that emotion. What would it look like to be motivated? What would it feel like when you're motivated? What would it sound like? Um, you know, so focusing on those kind of things and pulling you in that direction. If we get mad at ourselves and beat ourselves up, whether, you know, we can't get through to somebody or it's something's making us, you know, uh, feel anxiety ridden or whatever it is, um, then we're not focusing on where we want to go. So we're always taking everything and reframing things. So getting distracted. Yeah. It's the distraction that's taking you away because it's way more fun. It's kind of like going to that la-la place where... So he needs some Adderall? It's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah probably is, that is that his fix right there? Yeah. No, but it's, it's, it's actually so through hypnosis, being able to work on those things, finding that emotion, like for you, that emotion of being on that front porch, the emotion right. of holding that new baby and just, you know, the emotion of the love of your daughters yeah. um, is way more powerful than the whys. So instead of asking why, you ask how, and it takes you. So lots of little tricks and things that uh, we can throw in there to change the way that you see it. So in that relaxed state, so it's fixation, relaxation, and repetition is how we use hypnosis. Now can you do like group so, I think, I really do want to work on that. I think Brody does too. And Bob, it would be amazing if he stopped smoking and not be angry bird about it. Because Lou had to say, just smoke because I can't handle you without yeah. cigarettes. But yeah. we, and Nicole wants to do the gym. So, wouldn't it be, can you hypnosis or hypnotize us together as a group? Like if we were to come to your office or you need to do it individually? Probably individually because it's all different things, right? So, you've heard of the smoking in a group. Um, yeah. Years ago, I did that. It was it was pretty profound, and it worked well for me for about two weeks. And it was um, it was one of those situations where you were sitting in a room with people you didn't know. You're touching me, you're touching me kind of thing, you know. So I was very distracted, although I had must have had an underlying desire, was ready and didn't know what. But it was short-lived. And I had quit many times on my own, but when I quit through hypnosis one-on-one, -on -one, that's why I think it's more specific. You can really work with that person as opposed to... We, we can't just throw everybody in a general pool, right? So your maybe motivation is driven by something different than your motivation to quit smoking, than your motivation to get to the gym. Now, yourself. also, I've heard, too, that it's 
demonic in a way to be hypnotized. Have you heard that? I mean, oh, there, yeah. I mean, this is the yeah. Bible Belt, so I mean, I'm sure Absolutely. that's come up. Yeah, it happens a lot. Uh, there are people, and I have, I have testimonials, books of testimonials at the office of people that have gone through the program, been very successful. We are successful there. But one of the things that I've dealt with a lot is, you know, hey, I'm a Christian. I'm like, hallelujah, so am I, <laughs> you know. Uh, and, and I am. I don't hide that fact, and it doesn't matter to me whether you are or not, but that's who I am. Um, it's not demonic. We don't take your brain out and do anything with it. We cannot control you. You would never take a suggestion you don't believe in. You would never take a suggestion that goes against your moral fiber. So if uh, if you don't normally shoot people or rob banks, nobody could make you do that. You can't get stuck in hypnosis. Um, you would either fall asleep or just pop your eyes open and say, okay, I'm done. There is a guy, and this is completely weird, but there was a guy, <clears throat> he was a hypnosis uh, expert. And I saw him, watched him go through a bar and make people go, people uh, get on their hands and knees and move <laughs> like cows and cowboys. And they were, it was amazing. Yeah. He was like the, the world's fastest hypnotist or whatever. And he did it. And I saw him. Did he make you get on all fours? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, it, you know, those things, I mean, it's possible for that to happen. You know? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you it's, do that to Bob during his session? Yeah. We can, yeah, we can make you quack like a duck in no time. We'll get you up to four packs in no time right. as well. <laughs> so, wait, you got to tell everybody where they can find you because I think we should all really go. And Your office Absolutely. is just could down you, the street. Could you do it here at the office in a, in, a, in a room with Bob? Yeah, I could do that in a room. Um, I would prefer to do it in my office. I have a, a chair that you can relax in, the lighting's. You the know, likelihood of him of going quiet. to your office, though, is slim to none. Not happening. So. And I know yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so you might yeah. want to do it here for him. But, yeah, we should yeah. just try with yeah. Bob today, like, in another room, uh, and then have him come back and, and ask him what the experience is like. Yeah, okay. see what that's like. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So We're Raleigh Hypnosis. With, Raleigh Hypnosis. We are on Glenwood Avenue here in Raleigh, um, right at Women's Club Drive, so just down from the Crabtree Valley Mall. Okay. Okay. Yeah. How long would it take? Um... I think I'd need like 45 minutes or so. Um, do okay. some, we'll, we'll do, even though you saw me do that, uh -huh. we could do the same thing. I can watch myself do it and imagine, you know, how that happens. That's that's the part that you are doing all the work. Um, again, all hypnosis is self hypnosis. Anybody who tells you anything different is lying to okay. you. So right. sm get a smoke break yeah. in before you go yeah. and see her for right. 45 yeah. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you really have to be sincere. We can have wives bring husbands in by their ears, you know, and, and, say make him quit right. well they're just going to smoke at her yeah. you know i can't you know they have to be the ones that are calling making that appointment coming in and uh being sincere and taking that you know responsibility to say yeah i'm ready all right thank you for coming yes. in absolutely it's thanks a for having me. do you want